What's up everyone, welcome to the video. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys the Pentax Auto 110 camera view, as well as how to shoot 110 fail. The Pentax Auto 110 is, as you guessed it, a 110 film camera. This actually shoots very tiny film negatives. This is a 35 millimeter sleeve, and you can see how tiny these little 110 film strips are. There are six shots on each of these strips, and they are super small. The most obvious use for this 110 film is the fact that you can use it with a tiny camera. This camera is way smaller than my 35mm cameras and also way smaller than my medium format cameras. I'll do a quick camera overview and then I'll let you guys check out some footage of me shooting this camera. Before we go any further, if you guys can subscribe down below and hit the bell, it really helps the small channel grow. And thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and let's hop right back into the video. The build quality of the Pentax Auto 110 is nothing spectacular, it's very dirty durable plastic, I could see this survive in a drop or two, but it definitely will break eventually if you're not taking care of it. This camera features a double stroke mechanism, which is kind of confusing at first if you're used to mostly single stroke mechanisms. And also, if you don't wind this all the way on the first stroke, then the second stroke will feel very loose and like it's not winding the camera, and you might think your camera's broken like I did a few times, and you're just gonna have to pull this lever that final few millimeters just to fully cock it, and then you could do that second stroke. This camera automatically picks the shutter speed for auto exposure, and if it has enough light, it'll show you with an LED inside the viewfinder. On this camera, you can attach an auto winder, which is one of the accessories that I have on the bottom, and that is just simply gonna wind your film so you don't have to do those two shutter cocks. You could just keep pressing the button and it's gonna keep winding your film until you're eventually done with the roll. Another option is if you take this black piece off on the top of the camera, it exposes a place where you could put your flash in. You put the flash in there, and then every time you press the shutter button, it's gonna automatically shoot that flash for you, giving you a cool look. And then the only other functionality of this camera is the lens mount, and that lets you basically take off the lens and put lenses on. So yeah, you have that little thing on the left, just like normal SLRs, and then you can just pop them on and off, and it's pretty easy and nice to switch out the lenses. Load in 110 millimeter film is very easy. You pop open this back and you drop the cartridge straight into the back of the camera. It's literally that easy. 110 film was definitely meant to be the easy person's way into film because it's not as hard as loading 35 millimeter or medium format film. Once you finish that 110 roll, you just take it out and then you have to find a lab that will develop and scan it. I always recommend going to your local labs first, but 110 is definitely a die-in format. So finding something online like the darkroom that I use is something that will develop and scan your film and give you good quality results. The good thing about 110 millimeter film is that it is mostly light tight besides the frame that you're exposing, so you can actually swap them out mid-roll, and you can also see which roll you are shooting in the back of the camera. Those are definitely perks that you don't get with 35 millimeter or medium format cameras unless you're using interchangeable backs. Another downside with the 110 millimeter film is the fact that it doesn't have a lot of exposures. It only has 24 exposures, so if you're shooting a 36 exposure of 35 millimeter film, you're definitely not going to have as much with this camera. So I actually put a ton of rolls to this camera. I put Lomography film in this because that's the most commonly sold film for this. And I shot rolls in New York City, Brigginton Beach, and I even shot fun Lomachrome purple just throughout the span of a few days, just to kind of go with the happy, quirky feel of this camera. And I'm gonna let you guys check out that footage right now.
So as you can see with the shots, even though I selected a high quality scanning option for my 110 film, I wasn't really happy with the results. They were kind of small, although the Loma Chrome and some other things were fun. It really just wasn't good enough and I don't feel like it has a feel in kind of like 35mm film or medium format film. It has some colors, but really it's lacking detail to give me that emotional invocation that I get from 35mm and medium format film. So then why is 110 format still around? Well. I would have to say that 110 format is still around because it's something that is kind of fun. If you're shooting pictures of your friends, I found that this camera definitely succeeds. It gives you that film fun look. But if you're shooting anything far in the distance like landscapes or anything of meaning, then it really lacks that detail to show you what that object is. So I really only would recommend 110 film for someone who's scared to jump into 35mm film or 120 film and you're scared of developing and scanning at home, then definitely get a 110 camera. It gives you that fun punchy look that you could shoot around with your friends and then you just have to send it off and then wait a few days to get your film back. But then it's really not that much after you get it. You definitely can't edit your film that much. It's definitely kind of what you get is what you get because there's not a lot of detail there. So if you're happy with results and you don't want to edit your film, then 110 film can definitely be for you. Out of all the cameras I've shot, I really enjoyed shooting with the 110 and I shot many rolls through it, but after I got the results back, I just felt like for my work personally, I don't enjoy the 110 format. I know there's someone out there that probably loves 110 film, but I'm sorry, it's not something I can recommend, it's not something I enjoyed. I'm gonna stick to 35mm film at least, and probably try to shoot medium format as much as I can. But that's it for this video, that's how to shoot 110 film as well as the Pentax Auto 110 film camera view. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.